Hello, it's me again. Um, so I wanted to make a video discussing about why we should respect people with mental illness or any disability. Um, because I feel like it's something we need to talk about um, as a society and also get messages out there. Um, so it's one of those things where mental illness has been seen by so many different perspectives, both completely incorrect and, you know, somewhat correct and very correct over the years, or centuries technically. Um, but I feel even now, modern day 2014, we still don't get the respect and treatment we deserve. Um, so let me just get it straight out there. I was diagnosed with schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, borderline personality disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder, um, reactive attachment disorder, ADHD, and nonverbal learning disabilities. So I have quite my fair share of things to deal with. But just because I have those diagnoses doesn't mean that it defines me as a person. And I feel that society likes to define us um, through labels, which isn't right. Um, I want to just get a message out there that people with mental illness are just as much humans as you know, everybody else. There's never been anything that made them non-human or um, justified the right to call them anything but human. Um, but I just wanted to get this message out there because, you know, I feel like in this society, it recently in years, um, especially 2014, there's been more discussion about it, more education, more awareness. But I still feel like we, as a society, have a long way to go. Um, a very long way to go. So, I wanted to make this video trying to, you know, get this message out there, but also prove a point um, by talking about my story. Uh, not every little detail, but, um, but also the positives. Because a lot of the time people, when they don't understand mental illness, think that, oh yeah, they're always in, you know, restraints in a hospital, or, you know, they're not really out with normal people when that's really not the case at all. So when I'm going to talk about some stuff, it might seem like almost like a bragging, but it's more to prove a point. So I just want to clarify that um, now. And you'll see what I mean like later because of you know, this stuff. So let's see. Let's start from the beginning. Well, sorry, I'm just trying to organize my thoughts here. It's kind of hard sometimes. Um, right, let's just start from here then. I've been hospitalized 24 times. Um, it's 2014, so I've been hospitalized 24 times since January of 2006. And right now I actually am in partial hospitalization, so, but I don't really count those when it comes to, um, when I count into the number of hospitalizations I've had. Um, and I've attempted suicide 72 times. Um, since February 2005. So, I've done, you know, a lot, and a lot of it was because of either, you know, I was having really bad hallucinations, um, sometimes delusions, and just things that, you know, drove me almost to me insanity because I was going through so much pain, but also I was trying to, you know, commit suicide, um, to escape the pain of PTSD from child abuse that I endured for years. Um, and no longer being abused, thank God. But, you know, all that played a factor. So, say that, you know, I've been through a lot. You know, I was born in Paraguay, a small country in South America. Um, and when I was there, um, I'm adopted now. I was living in an orphanage. Now, the orphanage was not really well supported by the government at all. Paraguay was still kind of going through a chaotic time because they just got rid of a dictator in 1989. So, you know, in 1995, they're still trying to um, get the country kind of rolling, you know, in a new, completely different way. Uh, if you know what I mean. Sorry, I'm just kind of out of it. Um, so that resulted in not getting a lot of support from the government, which means that the orphanages did not have enough resources. So I lived... 10 months without food. You know those insurers like, you know, nutrition to find at Walmart? That's what I survived on once a day if I was lucky. So I already had a rough beginning. Um, so would that play into why all this began to happen? I don't know. You know, with the whole mental illness, but, you know, just part of my life story. 
I came to the United States, and my parents realized that, you know, something must have happened, because even when I saw food, I would rapidly start shaking, um, and screaming on the top of my lungs. So I think my parents kind of picked up on that um, pretty early. But after I was nursed back to health, I was fine. At least for a while. As time went on, um, physical, sexual, and emotional abuse started to occur, which t definitely took a toll on um, my happiness and who I was. Um, and that was a very dark time in my life. That's kind of where everything started to start to go downhill. Um, but I didn't realize it. I thought it was just, you know, going to be a depression that I'd be able to pull myself out of. I mean, I was young. I didn't know, you know, what really mental illness was. I mean, I was still kind of, you know, sheltered from that. So, I'm sorry, I missed a lot of it. Um, <clears throat> So as time went on, you know, I was struggling with, you know, those hospitalizations, suicide attempts, but I had my fair share of um, successes as well. A lot of successes, which was great. Um, so, I'll say this. I've always been into singing, it's something that always helps cheer me up. Um, you no, know, 2009, I was accepted into um, Southeast District Chorus, which thousands of people in my state auditioned for, and only 127 people can get in, and I got in. So I was really proud of that. Um, and as I got older, I started working different jobs. I work six jobs right now, um, and I take four classes every day at my college. So for people who think that people with mental illness only live in hospitals and they can't do anything, think again. Because, you know, I have one of them more extreme disorders as well, like schizophrenia, and I'm still out here, I'm in my room, I'm in my house, it's a beautiful day out. Um, so, I try to pull away from the idea that when you think of them, you only think of them in hospitals. No, they could be the person sitting next to you at work, they could be your son, your daughter, cousin, you know, um, husband, wife, it can be anybody. And a lot of the time they're invisible illnesses too, it's not something you can see. Um, a lot of people say, oh well there's no biological evidence. Yes there is. Yes there is. A lot of the time it has to do with serotonin in the brain, different um, either chemical imbalances. I mean there's all kinds of reasons. But people with mental illness get treated differently because they can't see it. It's not like someone can take a look at them and say, oh okay I get it so I'll be respectful. It's one of those things where unless, you know, it's one of those very extreme ones and people can kind of get it even if you may not get it 100%, um, you know, you know what I mean by that. So that's where it gets a little bit different. But for me, you know, I'm 19 years old and in college. Um, you know, I'm, I consider myself definitely one of the more high-functioning ones. I know I've you know, been hospitalized 24 times and attempted suicide 72 times, but, you know, I'm still, you know, being able to function. I mean, right now I'm in hospitalization um, for outpatient. But no, it's not the end of the world. You know, I'm still pushing forward, still trying to accomplish my dreams of becoming a child abuse counselor. Um, and I wanted to live my life not just to the length of it, but to the width of it. In 2009, I was published um, in a book called Pieces of Me. There it is. It was published in November 2009. So I wrote about um, what it was like living in Paraguay, coming to the United States. Um, and struggling with my adoption issues I had when I was younger. Now I found located my biological family in Paraguay and in Argentina, which is great. But back then when I wrote this, um, I didn't. So it was it was harder. But I was very proud that I was able to get that done. They've also been published a few times in magazines, writing about things like that. So, you know, I've had my accomplishments that meant a lot and that, you know, diagnosis didn't label me or I didn't let it defeat me because it shouldn't. The DSM was created originally just so when psychiatrists would talk to each other, they wouldn't have to go on a whole list of symptoms and name it all over again and be repetitive. They just wanted to categorize it, just so it's easier and more for them to understand. But unfortunately, as time went on, and ignorance spread, that just became a label, and I refused to be labeled by it. You know, I like to always say that, you know, I might have PTSD, borderline, 
personality disorder, schizophrenia, and all that stuff, but it doesn't have me. I won't let it. I know that a lot of times it can be very disabling, um, and there's, it's, it can be awful, and, you know, even now it's pretty painful to think about a lot of the stuff that I've been through that, unfortunately, um, the hallucination solutions have let me to do. Um, but, you know, it's not, it's not the end of the world, and I won't let it stop me. You know, I'm in college right now. I want to become um, a child abuse counselor, help kids who went through what I went through, uh, make sure that doesn't happen on my watch, or at least I can help them recover from it. Sometimes I know it can't always be prevented because only one person takes a whole group of people to prevent it. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much, you know, that. But for school, I do well as well. Um, I struggle a lot, but I have a 4.0 GPA, even when I'm working six jobs. You know, even when I'm dealing with all the stuff in and right now in the hospital. You know, I won't let it stop me. I can't. It's just not an option. Um, now, when it comes to hospitals, now, you'd think that they would be better at um, taking care of people with mental illness or any kind of disability. Unfortunately, I would have to strongly disagree with that. Because when I've been in hospitals, sometimes, you know, I've looked at the, either the walls or just the building itself, and like, I know if people were here who didn't have, you know, mental illness, they would not have to live under these conditions. Like, one of the hospitals I went to had fungus growing in the corners. When is that acceptable, and when did, when did that even begin to meet state regulations? I'm sorry, that has to be illegal. Um, or very, very disgusting burnt food that's pretty much inedible. White bread, white bread that technically looks black. I mean, that's a whole other issue there. Um, but even just how sometimes staff or nurses talk to us um, or treat us like we're less than in hospitals where they've made fun of our issues. I have witnessed a fight before between uh, a patient and a staff at one of the hospitals I went to. And it was like a minor one. You know, it was one of those things that you could have just walked away. It would have been fine. But the staff responded by saying, at least I get to go home at night. That's low. That's very, very low. And you know, I think that, you know, even though I wasn't technically involved, I wish I reported that, you know, this was in 2010, but I really wish I spoke up and said something. Um, you knew the girl in 2007. I was physically, sexually, and emotionally abused by staff and nurses on a psychiatric ward in Kearney Hospital in Dorchester, Massachusetts, and this was in May 2007. Um, and that's what I have PTSD from. It's already bad enough, but it disgusts me to know that people who are supposed to help me in the first place are the ones who gave me PTSD, the ones who caused it. It took them till 2011 to be fired. 29 staff were finally fired, but they weren't fired for what they did to me. They got caught with doing, I think it was like five or six cases they got caught with. But, and of course, the, you know, news made it so like, oh yeah, five and six cases, but you know, I ended up calling the CEO myself, and I said, no, just get it out there. This happened for years, you know it. And I let him know what happened to me, because he was one of the newer ones, CEO in 2011, so. But anyway, um, you know, just, it's one of those things where I see the conditions in these hospitals, because I've been to so many. And I see the treatment that goes on from staff towards patients. And it's just not right. Are all patients innocent? No. Sometimes they can be provocative. That happens. People are provocative, not just patients. I'm not going to categorize them. But, you know, that happens, and that's understandable. And sometimes staff have to take precautions. But there's a limit. There's definitely a limit. So, excuse me. I just, I don't know what steps to take. I need everyone to back me up on this. I can't be the only one speaking up. I'm glad that now groups are forming, um, that movements are forming, but when it comes to better treatment, but for me it's not going fast enough because I see it all the time. I can live it. I don't just see it on the news. I don't see it posted on Facebook. I actually live through this. And I know that I deserve better. And I know that other patients deserve better because we are just as human as all of you. Like I said at the very beginning of this video, nothing has ever changed that. There's been no reason to even assume 
um, that we were different in any way, shape, or form. So, I want to see if any of you guys have any ideas on how we can make the system better. The system is so hard to change. I know it's it's a huge like it's all the way up here and then all this other stuff's down here. But it's hard to go all the way to the top to change it. But things need to change. I don't. I fear a lot of this stuff happens because of profit. And I know money is a huge part of what goes on in our economy today. And but when did money become more important than human life? Or the value of human life. When did that change? Or a better question is why? What led to that? These questions go through my mind. And I hate being treated like a mental patient. Because I'm human. And this happens even just in society as well. You know, I'll tell somebody I have, um, you know, bipolar or schizophrenia or whatever. And then they'll just be terrified as if you know, two seconds ago, I was immersed they knew the one who could sing, um, who does well in school, who works all the jobs, and then the minute that word comes out of my mouth, it's like, stay away from me. You know, I want nothing to do with you. Um, which really isn't fair, because it doesn't change me. You know. Um, but, I just wish people saw me and other patients for who they are, not their labels. It's frustrating. It's really, really frustrating because there's things. This kind of goes back to one of the positives. In 2010, I was accepted into a program that was for theater and for singing. And our, excuse me, our teachers, they were Broadway actors, which I thought was really cool. Um, so they was actually from Broadway. A few of them were in different movies as well. One of them was Matt Doyle, who played. Jonathan Whitney on Gossip Girl, the show. So I thought it was cool because I worked closely with them and I got to do a show with them on July 17th. And I worked so hard, you know, I learned 15 songs in two weeks uh, with all the, you know, choreography and all the lines, which is very, very hard. And we weren't allowed to um, sit down. We worked every day from 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock. And we were not allowed to take any breaks or sit down except for lunch. That was it. Um, we couldn't yawn because it's actually unprofessional to do that. And that industry is actually more of a kind of like a artistic cultural thing. You probably know all this if you are into this kind of stuff. But, um, so no, I worked very hard and I was able to do it and I was able to perform. You know, it was, it was awesome. And, you know, it just showed that, you know, I don't let anything stand in my way because during this time, I was actually, um, living in a group home for a year. So even though I was technically going through a really tough time, I was still able to do this and still be able to try to force myself to enjoy the things that, you know, I once enjoyed and I still enjoy because sometimes with, you know, terrible mood changes, you don't enjoy things anymore, which can be really tough. So with publishing a book, publishing stuff in magazines, um, being able to work with Broadway actors and have a show, you know, I've been on um, television twice for saying national anthem um, to national hockey games. Um, and also I was able to go on television with a professional author who had a few of them, um, books made into a movie, Teacher Deepa Karuni. Um, she wrote one amazing thing. So it was, and she wrote a lot of other books too, but that was my favorite one of hers. So it was cool. I get to do all this cool stuff, but no matter what I do, whenever I say the word, you know, keep up in there, that's what they see. And you know what? That's just not fair. It's just, it's just not right. And I don't think I should settle for this, and I don't think anybody else should. Because I know for a fact I'm not the only one who deals with this. So, you know, even though my file has all this, you know, stuff on it that involves, you know, oh yeah, delusional, hallucinations, uh, you know, suicide ideation, you know, 72 times, and, you know, 24 hospitalizations. Don't look at that. Look at me for who I am. And I want, you know, if there's any mental health um, providers watching this, you know, get to know the person before you really understand their diagnosis. Because we're not the diagnosis. We're completely separate. And that's my goal of this video is to really um, encourage people to see people as goes as exactly as who they are. Imagine yourself in their position. Would you want to be treated like that? Or viewed as that by society? Probably not. At least I hope not. Um, because as a person who lives through it, it's not fun. So, thank you for watching. I just wanted to, you know, get some kind of message out there because recently I've been treated differently because of it.
Um, best of luck to you. If you have any um, comments or questions, feel free to ask me, private message me, write in this video, I don't care. Um, so thank you. Right, have a good day.